Hey everyone, welcome back to Cruising with Matthew and today I'm doing a ship tour of Cunard's Queen Elizabeth. In this video I'm going to be talking about all the areas that you can enjoy whilst you're on board this fabulous ship. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Now, Queen Elizabeth is the newest of the three ships within the Cunard fleet, including Queen Mary II as well as Queen Victoria. Queen Elizabeth was built in the Monfalcone shipyard in Italy and was christened by none other than Her Majesty the Queen in October 2010. Weighing in at 90,000 gross tons, she can carry around 2,000 passengers and 1,000 crew. She has 12 passenger decks and can reach a top speed of 24 knots. Queen Elizabeth is similar to that of her sister ship Queen Victoria, although slightly larger. She is also the third ship to bear the name Queen Elizabeth, with her original namesake Queen Elizabeth being sister ship to Queen Mary, which is now permanently docked at Long Beach, as well as the famous QE2. And although she is a Cunard Queen, it is important to note that she is a cruise ship, not an ocean liner, and that title is reserved exclusively for Queen Mary II. So starting at the lowest deck, deck one, this consists largely of staterooms. Although midships, you encounter the gorgeous Grand Lobby, which is Queen Elizabeth's atrium. This is the area that you'll see for the first time when you get on board the ship, and you really get a prelude for the decor that you're going to have. There's lots of wood panelling, glass, and really has an art deco feel throughout, and I absolutely love this. The Grand Lobby spans three decks and has numerous venues running off it and is dominated by a stunning panel depicting the first Queen Elizabeth and it was designed by David Lindley who is the nephew of Queen Elizabeth II and really makes this area feel really special. Now on deck one of the Grand Lobby there's the tour office for those wanting to book excursions on board. For the moment, you have to book a Cunard excursion to be able to disembark, you're not able to explore on your own, although I imagine this will change in the future. Adjacent is the Voyage Sales Office if you're wanting to book future Cunard voyages. Now opposite these two is the Purser's Office, which acts as Queen Elizabeth's reception. And the staff here were always so helpful, so if you have any queries, these will be the people to visit. Now as you leave the Grand Lobby and move right to the front of the ship, you find the Royal Court Theatre, and this is a three-deck high theatre which could happily fit within London's West End, and even has its own boxes which you can book, and I imagine this would be the perfect place to spend a former night. During the day, this theatre plays host to some fantastic speakers, such as the Cunard Insights Lecture Series, and I attended ones talking about the Carpathia, as well as how Cunard came into being, as well as special speakers such as Julian Bird, who is the executive producer of the Olivier Awards, and he gave a fascinating insight into the awards, as well as theatre as a whole. So do make sure you keep an eye out to see who is going to be doing talks during your voyage. Now, by night, you were treated to a fabulous array of shows by the Royal Court Theatre Company. This includes a shortened version of Top Hat, which we absolutely loved, as well as the male group Fortunes, as well as comedians and pianists too. And it was so nice to be able to enjoy live entertainment again, and this theatre gave a stunning backdrop to it. So if we jump up to deck two and moving out of the Royal Court Theatre, you encounter a two deck high almost mini atrium and on deck two there is a casino for those wanting to try their luck on the various number of slot machines and tables in this space and although I don't use the casino myself, there seem to be a good range of game choices and this space really served as an amazing backdrop as there were some sweeping stairs leading up to the Royal Arcade shops on deck three and the whole area is dominated by a large clock by Dent, which is also another fantastic place to have some photos. By having this vast mini atrium, it really just helps elevate this space to a whole new level, and I really enjoyed walking through here. Opposite the casino is the Golden Lion Pub, which is a relaxed venue offering activities such as trivia, as well as live music performances, and even karaoke if you're feeling brave enough. And at lunch, it also acts as another dining venue, and this offers comfort foods such as a pie of the day, curries, and also traditional puddings such as sticky toffee pudding. Me and my family really enjoyed eating here, and it's nice to have something a little bit different, and the staff were always so lovely, as they were throughout the entire ship. Now moving further forward, you find the Queen's Room. This has to be probably the most unique space on board a Cunard ship, and Queen Elizabeth is no exception. 
This is a two deck high ball room with two stunning chandeliers and I absolutely love this because I've never seen something like this on land let alone at sea. By day the Queen's room was used for talks as well as some fabulous recitals. For instance we enjoyed a lovely afternoon recital by the EOS string trio which was really interesting and this would also be the site for afternoon tea, although this wasn't the case for our crews as they have temporarily moved afternoon tea to the Britannia restaurant due to COVID restrictions. By night this venue really came into its own as loads of people got up and danced a huge range of stars from ballroom dancing to the jive, the foxtrot and everything in between and you often had a full band and vocalist playing. It was so nice to see people dancing because I'll be honest I've never seen something like this with the exception of things like Strictly Come Dancing so seeing it right in front of me was incredible. It was just a fantastic venue and probably my favourite spot on board Queen Elizabeth. Moving further forward, in another nod to Cunard's history and also the history of the Queen Elizabeths, there's a number of historical items from the original Queen Elizabeth as well as QE2 and I thought that was really cool and really just highlighted how much history has inspired these fabulous ships. As we enter deck two of the Grand Lobby, there is Cafe Corinthia and they serve the best coffees as well as a hot chocolate which, to be honest, was a meal in itself at times and was a really nice place just to rest and have a catch up with your family or friends. Throughout the day, various light bites are served so you can enjoy some pastries or at lunchtime there are a number of platters and I'd really recommend going here if you want to try something a bit different. Takeaway options are available too, so if you're wanting to take a drink up to your stateroom, this is the place to go. During the evening, this also offers a range of cocktails and other alcoholic drinks too. Directly opposite the Cafe Corinthia is the only extra charge restaurant on board, and this is the Veranda Restaurant. This offers a variety of seafood and steak options available at lunch and dinner. And although I didn't dine here myself, the meals look really impressive, with the menu aiming to celebrate foods from the United States, the United Kingdom, as well as Australia. So I imagine this is the perfect spot to celebrate a special occasion. Nearby there's also the library. This has to be the best library I have ever seen on a ship, spanning two decks between decks two and three and features a gorgeous glass ceiling at the top and is connected by a spiral staircase and it offered a huge range of books so I'm really impressed and I imagine this space will be really well utilised on Queen Elizabeth's longer voyages. Now moving further aft you encounter the main dining room on board Queen Elizabeth, the Britannia restaurant. The art deco feel of Queen Elizabeth is probably most evident here with a sweeping staircase, a gorgeous centrepiece with lots of panelling, sculptures and glasswork throughout. It made every meal feel so special. The fact that the restaurant was also two decks really helped give a sense of opulence and for those who were situated right at the back of the restaurant they were treated to some fabulous wake views. And the food was amazing and was served by some fantastic waiters and sommeliers who couldn't do enough to help us. We enjoyed breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea and dinner here. We've never normally had breakfast or lunch in the restaurants before, but I really liked it and made the whole experience feel a little bit more civilised. Due to Covid restrictions, in addition to afternoon tea being here, Freedom Dining took place during our voyage, which runs from 7.45 to 9, although people can have assigned tables at 6, although Cunard have stated that they will revert back to the traditional first and a later second sitting when restrictions allow. Nearby there's also the Britannia Club restaurant which is a smaller, more intimate restaurant for those who have a higher grade of stateroom but not the princess and grill suites. So if we now jump up to deck 3 and move away from the main dining room, you pass the photo gallery and studio. Now this would be perfect for those wanting to take more in-depth photo shoots if you're celebrating a special occasion. Moving into the Grand Lobby once again, there is the aptly named Midships Bar and offers a range of drinks and this was a popular spot to relax in the evening and dotted throughout this area are these beautiful murals of the Atlantic which look just incredible. Now opposite the midships bar there's the top half of the library as well as the card room and this is something you don't see that often on modern ships. The ship geek in me really liked the photos in this space because they were all showing Queen Elizabeth's construction so I thought that was a nice touch. Now leaving the Grand Lobby and moving further forward, you pass through a small art gallery by Clarendon Fine Art. So this is the spot if you're wanting to buy some art whilst you're on the voyage, but I also just liked having a look at the various styles of art on offer. Moving further forward, you encounter the Royal Arcade. Now the Royal Arcade offers shops to suit everyone's taste. There are jewellery shops, makeup and perfume shops such as brands like Jo Malone, 
as well as clothing brands including Jaws and Barber and for those wanting to pick up some Cunard memorabilia you will be spoilt for choice with things such as teddies, pens, glass ship models and much much more. And what I really like is how the Royal Arcade features those sweeping stairs that I mentioned earlier onto deck two near to the Golden Lion and the Casino and it really helps integrate the shops into the rest of the ship and makes this space akin to something I'd imagine you'd find in Knightsbridge or Mayfair. At the very front of deck three, if you step outside, you can enjoy a fabulous full wraparound promenade deck. This is a feature that I absolutely love on a ship, as I find it really helps me connect with the sea because you're so close to it. I love how Cunard have these padded steamer chairs dotted along the promenade deck and they were positioned in the way that they didn't really get in the way and these were so so comfy. Now the forward section is covered but the stern area gives these gorgeous weight views and I spent so much of my time just looking out over this view as Queen Elizabeth made her way through the Scottish Highlands. Decks 4 to 8 are all staterooms and we had an amazing balcony stateroom which me, my gran and my mum absolutely loved but I will cover that in a future video. Now the only exception to this is on deck 5 where Cunard will open a viewing platform which is situated right at the front of the ship during the period of scenic cruising or sailing in and out of particular ports depending on the weather. I'd recommend that you visit here at least once and although there is a significantly raised threshold to get to this space it is totally worth it because you get some fabulous bow views and if you turn around you also get to see the bridge and this is something that you really don't get to do on many ships so I would thoroughly recommend it. If we jump up to the very forward of Deck 9, there is Mareel Wellness and Beauty. So if you're wanting to get pampered, this spa is the one for you and features a range of treatments including facials, massages, as well as a thermal suite, hydrotherapy pool, as well as a relaxation area. And nearby there's also a salon. This area also features a gym which looks out over the front of the ship. And this is probably one of the only areas of Queen Elizabeth I was disappointed in because there were few machines and even fewer free weights. Although there were a good number of treadmills and bikes and things like that. Now moving further midships, you encounter the first of two pools on board Queen Elizabeth. The midships pool, known as the Pavilion Pool, features two large whirlpools and also a good sized pool. This was a really popular spot during the sunnier days of our voyage and even on windier days, because the pool was slightly sheltered, the wind didn't affect this pool too much, so you were still able to sit out if it was warm enough. Close by there's also the Pavilion Bar, so you're not too far from your favourite drink. Moving further aft and stepping inside, we encounter the Garden Lounge. Now this was inspired by the conservatories of Kew Gardens and I really like this space as the large amount of glass let lots of natural light flood in and made the Garden Lounge feel really light and airy. It was very popular for quizzes during the day and I can imagine it really comes into its own during periods of inclement weather because you can still sit out and enjoy the views and enjoy a catch up with friends or a few drinks. Further aft we encounter the Lido Buffet. Now due to COVID-19 restrictions, breakfast, lunch and dinner were all waiter service and unlike other lines which I've been on, this didn't include the food being handed to you at the buffet station, instead you sat down and food was brought to you. And I really enjoyed this as it really made the whole experience feel more civilised. That being said, it did take a little bit of time for us to get seated, especially near the end of breakfast, but we tended to be seated quite quickly and the food was definitely worth the wait. Now moving further aft on deck 9, there is a vast area of open deck space which features some fabulous weight views, a ton of deck chairs as well as sofas and things like that. In the centre there is the Lido pool which was surprisingly deep as I wasn't able to touch the bottom of one side of the pool and I'm 6 foot 2 so that is a massive rarity on a cruise ship so I have really enjoyed swimming here. There's also two whirlpool spas nearby. I really loved getting one of the sunbeds closest to the wake of the ship and I spent many afternoons enjoying a cocktail from the Lido bar and reading my favourite book with the sound of the ship's wake in my ears. In addition to the Lido bar, there's also a Lido grill which is perfect for those who wanted a snack between meals. So if we climb up to deck 10 and move further midships, there's even more deck space on this level. There's also quite a number of cool perspectives here as well as you can look all the way down the side of the ship. You can also see Queen Elizabeth's name situated just below the funnel, you know, just in case you forget what ship you're on. 
and around the funnel on decks 11 and 12 you can spot the grills areas which features a dedicated lounge as well as restaurants for those in the Queen's Grill and Princess Grill suites as well as their own dedicated terrace, although I couldn't gain access to those sadly. Nearby on deck 10 there's also the children's areas but they weren't open so unfortunately I wasn't able to film there. Now just above the pavilion pool you can see a raised platform with a chessboard looking all the way down towards the stern of the ship. This is the spot that I would recommend you go to just before midday as Queen Elizabeth's horns will sound and believe me they're a little bit loud. <laughs> Now that is a proper horn, and actually a replica of the original Queen Elizabeth's horn, which is why it sounds so impressive, although it made me jump on many occasions. Just above this platform, on deck 11, is the games deck. This is situated right at the front of the ship, and features a variety of games such as bowls or croquet. This was a really interesting novel idea, although I feel like it occupies a space which could have potentially been better utilised as an entertainment venue or a bar, but that's just my opinion. Now moving down to deck 10, you encounter the fabulous Yacht Club, and this features a gorgeous chandelier which changes colour during the evening and is a fabulous late night venue offering brilliant cocktails as well as relaxing jazz, and me and my grand didn't end up leaving here until about half one when we visited, so we definitely made the most of this venue. Now leaving the Yacht Club and moving to the very front of the ship, there's a fabulous walkway which shows all the plaques awarded to Queen Elizabeth during the maiden calls to certain ports, and I found this really interesting. On one side there is Churchill's Cigar Lounge, and this is dedicated for those who want to smoke a cigar on board, but also helps prevent the smoke from drifting into other areas. And right at the front of the ship is the Commodore Club, quite possibly my favourite bar on Queen Elizabeth. It features fantastic panoramic views over the front of the ship, decorated by scale models of QM2 as well as Queen Elizabeth, portraits of QE2, Queen Elizabeth in Sydney, and on the other side of the bar, there's also a large portrait showing the Queen's meeting up in Southampton, and is a wonderful place to relax and read during the day, or meet up with friends and have a catch up. By night, however, it really comes into its own, as there's often a pianist playing, and there are a huge range of cocktails offered here, served by friendly and knowledgeable waiters. This was our frequent port of call before dinner. I loved how you always got some nibbles and also some little canapes as well before dinner, and really made the start of our evenings feel really special. Now, as you can see, Queen Elizabeth is a gorgeous looking ship. I absolutely adore her Art Deco feel and really helps transport me back to the golden age of cruising. Everywhere you look, you're greeted to another fabulous venue which feels really classy and refined. And what I really enjoy is the fact that although it feels really luxurious, it doesn't feel obnoxious or overly stuffy. Quite the opposite, in fact. You are able to enjoy these stunning surroundings, but also relax and have a good time too. And I think Cunard have struck a really good balance here. It feels like you're on the ocean liners of old, and I absolutely love that feeling. So, I really hope you enjoyed my ship tour of Cunard's Queen Elizabeth, and if you have, please like and subscribe because it's always appreciated. And I have lots more videos planned over the coming months, including videos on Celebrity Cruiser's Celebrity Silhouette, P&O Iona, and also more on Cunard's Queen Elizabeth, so I can't wait to share those with you. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So, until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.